Here is my friend Brian from Burlington, Winooski area, Vermont. And today I want to bring you one of my favorite homebrew connection stories from the years. That's one of my oldest ones. So Brian started brewing in about 2001 and around 2006-2007 he was brewing in a, in a complicated way and he found my simple all grain brewing video and that actually helped him do a simpler version of his brewing and gave him an energy and an enthusiasm that he didn't have because he was messing around with a lot more of a process. So that was kind of different than a lot how a lot of people uh, find my videos and use them to go from extract into all grain. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, probably around 2007 or 8, we started corresponding. We did some trades. We did several beer trades, and I really liked his homebrew he was making. He made some unique, creative things. He liked what I was sending him. And then around 2010, he said he was going to be in town, the Minneapolis area, for some work training. And would I be interested in meeting? And this was the first time that anybody had asked me that. Now, since then, I have met a number of people on purpose, also accidentally in different places. Some of you guys uh, notice me and run into me. But Brian came to Minneapolis. He took a train. I mean, he took the bus to St. Paul. We hung out in my backyard. Drank probably too many beers on a like a Wednesday night and had a really great time. He brought some stuff from out east, and since then we've just became became friends. Now he has opened a brewery, so he has a brewery called Four Quarters Brewing. I've done some reviews. You're going to see a bunch more reviews after this intro. That brewery opened officially in March of 2014. He loves to do a lot of different uh, recipes, a lot of different creative tweaks on different recipes, as you'll see in some of the cans coming up. Uh, I asked him about how is your experience and preferences in your home brewing hobby translating to commercial brewing. He said the spirit of experimentation in home brewing has been a part of me and commercial brewing for sure. Um, he also made note though there are batches that he likes to make, but they don't sell as well possibly so you do have to make beer that people are gonna buy uh what else can i say here he vowed never to start a brewery at some point but then a few things happened such as uh, he saw people getting let go maybe at his company for no apparent reason kind of out of the blue that made him realize that there's no security in, in certain kinds of jobs also, when the new mode came about of having a tap room and be able to have all that revenue, that also was a push in the direction. And then he found a good location. And yeah, he has a brewery. Another note, a couple years ago, I went to Vermont for a week. Some of you may have seen my video report on that. You can search YouTube, Don Osborne, Vermont, probably find it. Just a whole bunch of great music, beers, different things that we did. We had a really fun week. We canned some beer. He taught me, I got me kegging some beer in the brewery. The last thing I'll say is after this, I have a pretty unentertaining unboxing video. You can skip through that if you want. It's like a minute or so long of unboxing the beer that he sent me, and I didn't know what he sent. So for me, that was kind of fun to see what was coming my way. But please check out Four Quarters Brewing if you have any capacity to. Their distribution is obviously not huge. But if you're ever out east, if you're ever in Burlington, Winooska, actually I've had a couple people I know that have gone there and enjoyed it. He has been able to expand. So I think the brewery is doing pretty well. They get good reviews. And please enjoy this video. This has been a really fun experience getting to know Brian, having a couple visits, trading beers, and seeing how a home brewer has gone into a successful commercial brewers. So please enjoy the video. 
Catch you on the flip side. All right, guys, it's like Christmas. This is the package that I was just talking about. I have opened it, but I have not looked at the cans or unpacked it. I suppose I could have got a tripod for this. But let's see here. Set them out, and then we'll take a look. So, yeah, Brian hasn't, I don't think I've had any beer from him since I was visiting a couple of years ago. So this will be fun, and I promised him I would send him a return shipment. If I don't mess up this case too much, maybe I can use it, although I have more bottles than cans. Clap your hands. So that would be one problem, but I need other boxes. This is going to be the worst video ever. Alright, let's take a look. What a beauteous sight. He always does such a nice job with the labels, the names. Wow, I haven't tried any of these except for maybe the sun dog. We have Juniper Rose, which is the name of his daughter. Horn on the moon. Big umbrella. I saw this picture the other day. It looks cool. Pina Peno or Perro. Sun dog. What what? And double comet. So. We'll have to do a tasting of all of these, maybe with a couple of guys over a period of however long it takes. Let's we'll see what kind of beer Brian is making these days. <laughs> Nothing boring. All right, so there is the scene down there. This is the scene up here. We have Michael Dawson. Hello. Chip Walton. And the first beer is Sun Dog. The can looks like this. The beer looks like this. What do we all think? The drinkers what do you look think? like this. The drinkers look like this for now until later when they will look different. We all noted its dankness. It's dankosity. It has... But it's also got fruit and some cloudy... Fruit for days. Citra yeah, and amarillo. Haze, haze and fruit for days. Yeah. It doesn't come off, like, noticeably strong. Yeah. For it, better or for worse. It, 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 uh... Probably for better. It conceals that 8% pretty well. It's drinkable, right? I think this counts as a... New England style IPA, would you guys agree? Clearly. It uh, has the softness. I mean, hazily, right? not hazily, not clearly. Unclearly. Hazily. Yes. It has the softness, a lot of yummy, bursting bright hop flavor, which goes with the label, so maybe that's suggestive. But it's tasty. I like Brian, the name. I nice wanna, job. I wonder mm -hmm. how long he's had that name, because Summit wanted to name a beer that, and at one point we saw that there was at least six beers named that, so we didn't do it. But. I think he's had it a little while. Yeah, good, good for him. It's a smart name, like, it's a great... How long the brewery has been open will be mentioned before this. Off the top of my head, I'm not actually not sure I have to look it up, but it's around three years. Yeah. Maybe over now. So, I think he's had this for a while. But yeah. Independent label. What does that mean? Oh, uh, the Craft. Craft Brewers Independent. Oh, the BA. Okay. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, BA, sorry. We're going to try to keep these pretty short because we have six of them total. Probably just a couple tonight. First beer, thumbs up. Because of that shit. Because of that joke. Of this little joke. Double Comet is an also an 8% hoppy beer. We thought we would do the Tasting hoppy the ones <laughs> first. Like, like you'd see a comet in the dark. Tasting in the dark. <laughs> Whistling um, in the dark. Boom, boom. Whistling in the dark. I don't I'm know. I'm thinking of writers on the storm. Whistling. Yeah. Oh, they might be giants, maybe. I'm I'm counting crows. 
So it's true. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Okay, we're done counting crows. All right, so this one was canned on 8-1-18, which is like nine days ago. I know, that's so awesome. one day fresher than this. Totally different beers, same beer style, same ABV, different well, hops, clearly, and process, right? Well, the quick Google research led us to believe this was double dry hopped with Comet Hops. Good name. Uh, double Comet. Double Comet. Which also exists, though, right? I mean, double Comets are a Oh, thing. probably. Why not? Okay. I'm not sure. That's another Google search. Um, yeah. Chip, you were saying this was more like what you envision as your platonic ideal of a double IPA. A little bit more. Yeah. Def the a first one bigger. finished softer and New england yeah. This one's, we're ramping up the bitterness. We're ramping up like yeah. hop. The hops are a little more aggressive. Hop presentation. Yeah. Right. And maybe that's the process. Maybe that's Comet versus uh, Amarillo and Citra. I get like mad lemongrass out of this. Uh, this hop, like a, mad lemongrass, mad, like it's, mad, it's angry. Not just like a little bit, like <laughs> not, not just satisfied and content lemongrass. Lemon it's low key lit. Uh, All right, lemongrass is turned up. It's turned. All right, I would, I would have, if you told me this was sriracha ace, I would, I would almost believe you. Oh, because it's that lemony. Yeah, that's what I'm getting out of it. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen from Michael Dawson's mouth to your ear holes. Vermont. Brian, for my two cents, I like this beer also. It's also very well done. I am actually not able to pick out the lemongrass per se, but I definitely enjoy this beer. It's delicious. Two for two so far. You're on a roll. Keep it up. All right, then. Big umbrellas. So here we are, we're in uh, Colton Point State Park, Pennsylvania, right? Right, yes. We think. It's a yes, sour it ale with toasted coconut and pineapple. Brian, here is the deal with this. We are supposed to be at the Fish Festival right now. And as some of you know, she got canceled. There was problems with the water. You can't have water for 40,000 people, you're going to cancel the festival. So I brought the can that you sent to me from Vermont to St. Paul, from St. Paul almost all the way back to Vermont, and I was going to drink it at the Fish Festival because I thought that would be a nice tribute. And uh, But yeah, we're camping because the festival is canceled. Cancelable. So here is the crew, cancelled ball. Thanks for the beer. Ball. Yeah, we're gonna pass it around. We're rocking the tunes. We're camping at this state park area. We did a hike. Trying to keep it real a little bit. I get the tartness and I get a little bit of pineapple. I'll see if the coconut comes through. 8%. That's kind of. What happens when I kick it out of your hand? Dangerous. You die. That's what happens. <laughs> Water. Unchecked aggression. Yeah, well, that aggression will not stand, man. <laughs> you got the wrong Lebowski, man. Feels money all over town. This is really nice. Including the known pornographers. Really nice. Excuse me? Oh, right, 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 right. They're the little Lebowskis. He's into kids, man. Anyway, <laughs> this is the third one I've tried out of the six. Sorry, I'm not at Curveball doing a review for you. I was at Curveball. We went. He's got the bracelet to well, I got it. the bracelet to prove it. We were there. It didn't happen. Anyway, um, yeah, there we go. Catch you on the flip side. We got three more four quarters beers to drink at some future Good. point. Beer. What's up, everybody? I'm doing something different. This is my fourth four quarters beer review out of six. I'm camping Horn of the Moon Wit Beer with Sweet and Bitter Orange Peel 5.9%. Oh, sorry. 
I'm kind of uh, winging it here. I'm camping in uh, western Wisconsin. It's Labor Day. I thought I'd bring one or two of these to um, do reviews. I tried to do the re previous review at the fish festival and failed. That's what we got going on for the Horn of the Moon. This is not the best um, glassware, that is true. Might have a kayaker rolling in here. Are you landing? Yeah. All right, I'll get out the way. Um, my first sip is good, but I will continue this in a minute. Okay, so I kind of, there was some kayakers coming through, so I had to get out of there. Back at the campsite, Brian, another nice job. The orange peel is subtle, not uh, overpowering. Could be more, I suppose, but it's a decent drinking beer, and it's going down nice on this Labor Day weekend. So, I have two more to do. All right, everybody, this is a cool label on this Juniper Rose, which is namesaked after Brian's daughter, June, who helped, uh, she apparently really helps out in the brewery quite a bit. She's a five-year-old, maybe six now. And uh, we're gonna try this beer, which is a American IPA brew with hibiscus and the pink Boots, Hot Blend, Palisade, Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra, and Laurel, 7.3%. Now, he did mention that he was a little disappointed, or I've had this for maybe a month, and I hadn't gone to it yet. He's like, oh, that beer is, you know, better fresh. So that's on me. I've had it for a while. I've been trying to do these reviews in uh, different circumstances, situations, locales, if you will. The reason I'm sitting here right now as I'm back in my hometown at Amory, Wisconsin for a fall festival in an area where I spent a lot of time messing around as a kid. This is the Amory Water Tower. It is, my parents live uh, just on the other side of that bush in the center of the frame. We spent so many hours over here as kids climbing up these you know, climbing on top of the shed, climbing up into the, a little bit up into the cage. We never went all the way up, but I'm back for the Fall Fest. I thought I'll bring this beer. I have the other one too. We'll see if I get to it. I got to get to these reviews. So hibiscus, I'm not real familiar with hibiscus, but there is a little bit of a floral fragrant difference. It also could be from the hops. There definitely is an aroma even though this beer is um, what he might consider to be a little bit past prime. It has a little bit of a pink hue. I, I actually don't know if that comes from the hibiscus but I guess it must because it doesn't come from hops or the other grains. It does have a nice aroma. And it is um, still drinking like a pretty solid IPA. Quite possibly, it is not as fresh as it would have been a month ago, which is fair, and that can be on me. Some of these really hoppy beers, they do drop off a little quicker. The New England IPA, for whatever reason, the way it's brewed, it uh, tends to, I think, really peak you know, earlier on, but this is still solid. I love the label as well which is uh, some doodles I think that June did so also there's a article in I believe it's brew your own that is a write-up on June and her helping out in the brewery it's about four quarters brewing I will try to post a link to a picture of the a scan of the article that you could go take a look at I'll try to remember to put that in the comments below the video I have one more can one more of these six, 
and everything has been great so far. We'll see if I get to it in Amory or another day. We have the final four quarters can and I am back to where we started doing these reviews with Chip. We have, I do not know how to say this. Pina Pino. Pina Peño? Pina, oh, Peño, yeah. Maybe. Pina I don't know Peño. what that means. Well, I if you like Peño, Pina Peño. Well, I'm betting money that maybe Pina is part of the word, the Spanish word for pineapple, whatever it is, and jalapeno. Pineapple. So it's basically Pana. a beer saying, pineapple and jalapenos up in here. Oh, Peño. Peño. Uh, we're, we're, outsmarted we're diversifying. Me. Outsmarted me once again. Cool label. I love it. I love the simplicity, the boldness. Um, all the labels are knocking out of the park. This is a Goza. So says Beer Advocate. And it says sour ale with pineapple, jalapeno, and sea salt. Which you saw that from the unboxing all those video clips ago. And... Cheers. Thanks for coming over. Many moons we, ago. We many have quarters ago. Many quarters of four quarters of moons ago. Many four quarters ago. We have a lot of beers to be drinking tonight. So we want to start with this one while we're fresh palates. And Brian, like everything else, this thing is tasting really solid. Mm -hmm. I think I get the sourness right away, which I assume is a kettle sour. I think it's often how these are made, although maybe not. Maybe you did a different treatment. Um, the pineapple, there is a sweetness, which if I didn't know, you could just think it's, um, you know, part of the malt flavor. Um, but now that you know, it kind of is a little bit pineapple-y. Yeah. I, mean, I think there's a little... Pineapple also attributes, attributes, I think, some acidity and tartness, so it probably complements the general style of Goza pretty well. It, it would. It might not actually stand it out would. all that much. And fruit Gozas are definitely a thing that yeah. are common. In fact, well, and fruit we have another one places, yeah. coming up. Right. The jalapeno is pretty subtle. I'm not getting a lot of that. However... That is something that will drop off, and I have had this for a little while. I don't know if there's a package date on here that I could easily see. I imagine there may not be, because I know a lot of your beers are just to be drank, you know, pretty quickly. But I have had it, I mean, I've had it myself for probably four to five to six weeks, and it may have been in the can for a little time before that. So, but, uh, that's a nice idea. Yeah. I mean, I... I wonder what you think, uh, Brian, if you would, when you drink this, if you think that you could ratchet up the jalapeno a little bit. You also want people to be able to drink the beer, so you don't want to kill them with it. Yeah, the salt, saltiness is not, it's also not overriding, but it, it's just kind of riding that kind of there in the, the finish, a little bit of the saltiness in the finish. Very nice beer. All the beers, all <laughs> six, have been really good. The Juniper Rose, I may have aged it <laughs> a little bit longer than ideal. The IPAs we had on the very first tasting with Dawson and Chip, those things were outstanding too. So, it's been really fun. I hope everybody has enjoyed watching this video with me talk a little bit about how I know Brian and how that sort of came to be in our homebrewing connection. And you saw a myriad of video reviews <laughs> in different places. Hopefully that was somewhat amusing. As always, thanks for watching, and we got more bears to taste. Catch thanks. you later. Peace. I don't want beer, y'all.